Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to show you how to engrave a stainless steel mug. Let's get into it. First up before we get started uh, make sure that whatever stainless steel mug you get, that you do clean it thoroughly before you go through this process. Uh, otherwise, you may run into issues during the engraving or coating procedures. This process will work for pretty much any kind of mug, whether it be a generic mug from Walmart, a Yeti mug, whatever it may be. The steps to it are all the same. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this, that you don't have to be using the exact same mug that I'm going to use. And for this video, I am going to be using the Enduramark spray. There are other brands out there. I'll leave links to them in the description below so you can check them out and decide which one may be right for you. And if you have any questions along the way or something wasn't clear, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. Now that we're ready, let's get started. For this process, you're going to need a stainless steel mug. You're going to need a marking spray, Enduramark or Surmark would work. This one specifically will engrave in a black color. And you're going to need a fabric ruler to measure the cup that you're going to be using. You'll also have to have water just to rinse the cup off at the end and then a towel to dry it off. So the first step is setting up the design. For this video, I'm going to be using the center center engraving method for this mug. If you haven't seen it yet, I did a video a few years back for how to engrave a mug that is anodized. I'll leave a card to that at, up at the top somewhere. So you can go and check that out if you need to. I'm gonna walk through how to get the measurements off of this mug, how to plug them into your design for the rotation of the mug and then I will show you how to machine it. So first up, let's grab some dimensions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take off the lid. This method will work for any mug that you're engraving. So the first thing I want to do is just get the overall length. So in this case, I usually start at the one inch mark to get a good registration point. So if you see here, this one is about six and one eighth inches long. So I'm gonna take that over to the computer and just write it down. Then I'm going to measure the circumference. So I'm going to take the widest part that has the hole because this is the side that's gonna get clamped to the drive wheel. Then wrap the fabric ruler all the way around until you overlap. So this one is right at 10 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that number down. You wanna make sure you get the dimension of where you start to overlap the ruler because this will give you your circumference measurement. Now that I have the measurements, I'm going to go over to the computer and I'll show you what to do. In this case, I'm using Adobe Illustrator, so I'm going to create a new document. And this is where the dimensions that we just took are going to come into play. So the width in this case is going to be the height or length of the mug that we captured before, which was the 6.125. The height in this case is going to be the circumference measurement that we grabbed. So that is going to be 10. The rest of this, I'm just gonna leave at the default and click create. This will give me an artboard that is the size of the mug. So now I'm going to grab my artwork. In this case, I'm just using my logo and I'm going to shrink it down to fit the mug. So in this case, I'm going to use about 2.75 as the overall width from left to right. One thing I do wanna mention here is in this case, this mug doesn't have any writing anywhere. There's no logo, I'm trying to center it above. Uh, there are little ridges here that I want to avoid, so I wanna make sure my logo is more at the top of this than at the bottom. If you are using a mug like a Yeti, or if you're using something that is a branded mug where they have a logo engraved, you'll want to make sure that you are measuring away from those logos 
to put your engraving. I do find that a logo height of about two and three quarter inches or 2.75 is a good width to have. That'll be your overall height of your logo on the mug because that seems to be a really good proportion for things that are square or circular. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this. Again, if you haven't watched my how to engrave a mug video, that actually goes through those details and you can check that video out. Something else I wanna do here is I actually want to stretch the logo only in the height direction. So I'm going to unlock the proportions and I'm going to take the height measurement and I'm going to multiply it by 1.1 or basically stretching it by 10%. This will help ensure that the final design will come out circular and not oblong. So from here, this is the setup. You can go ahead and center this in your artboard if you haven't already. So by going to the align window and say align to artboard, you can center it vertically. Once you have this, you can print it. In my case, I'm using an epilogue engraver, so I'm gonna make sure I choose that as my print driver. And I'm going to say it's a custom size and then print it over to the software. So from here, I want to make sure of two things. I wanna make sure that I make it center center engraving, and I wanna make sure that I use the correct settings. In this case, I'm going to import a setting that is already here. So there's a stainless steel with Surmark. This is a good starting point for me. So it's gonna be 500 DPI. The speed I'm actually going to slow down to 15 and the power I'm going to leave at 100. The dithering I'm going to make stucky and I'm going to make it engrave from the bottom up. One thing to keep in mind when you're engraving stainless steel, if you're using a marking solution like Enduramark or Surmark, you want to run it at a high power, low speed. You're better off running it slower than you think you need to because it needs the time to make that chemical reaction in order to get it to mark the stainless steel black. If you run it at too high of a speed, uh, it won't get a good permanent coating. So keep that in mind as you're going through this. Normally for say an anodized aluminum mug, I would not run this at 15% speed. It's just too slow. But for this stainless steel marking spray, 15% is going to give you that nice permanent bond. In addition to those settings, I'm also going to go up to the advanced tab and I'm going to turn on rotary. And I'm also going to say centering point as center center. This will make sure that this is a center center engraving job. From here, I can go ahead and hit print and send it over to the laser. As I said earlier, I'm going to be using the Enduramark Black Marking Spray. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't yet, read the instructions. But you need to shake it really well so that the nozzle doesn't clog. So you're going to have to shake it until the, that ball comes loose and you can hear it. So once you've done that, go ahead and shake it for a minute and then I'll show you how to apply it. All right, it's been about a minute. So now that it's all shaken up properly, what I do is I actually make a little test spray just out in the area over here to make sure that it comes out properly. The trick to this is spraying it in a thin, light coat that barely covers the metal. And you're going to have to rotate it a little bit as you do it. You'll wanna be about 12 inches away or so so about this distance, and you're just going to want to spray it lightly while you turn. Make sure you spray everywhere you think your engraving is going to be. So this should be enough surface area for my logo. So as you'll see, it's a very light coating. You can still see some of the stainless coming through it, 
There are no real heavy spots. I will say that there is some experimentation to this. You'll want to do some small little tags and make sure that you get the right thickness. Uh, it's going to take some practice to get that right amount on the coating. Once you have it with a nice light coating, I'm going to take this over to the machine and I will show you how to set the machine up and then run the job. The first thing you want to make sure you do before you boot up the machine is actually put the rotary attachment inside of it and then boot up the machine. You don't want to just plug in the rotary when the machine's already on because you could end up with a weird issue. Uh, it's not normal that it would happen, but to be on the safe side, if your machine is on, power it down, put the rotary in and then power it back up. So I've already got mine in the machine. You will most likely need to lower your bed pretty far to get the rotary to fit inside. But now that it's in, let's go over the process of machining the mug. For this video, I'm actually using the Fusion Edge 12 machine from Epilogue. So the setup for your machine may be slightly different, uh, but the same overall principles apply. But let's go ahead and walk through it. Okay, so once I have the rotary in, I want to put the mug onto the rollers. And you'll see that it's just short from reaching this spot. So I'm going to slide that other end in. So on my machine, there's a spot right here to hang the manual focus gauge. I'm then going to position that over top of the mug. Okay, once I have that positioned over the mug, I'm going to start over on the left side and I'm going to raise the bed until that manual focus gauge touches the mug over here. Once it's touching over there, I actually want to jog the machine over to the right and just make sure that that manual gauge is touching the whole way. You don't want it to be hanging off the edge anywhere. If it is, there is a little dial down at the bottom of the rotary where you can lower or raise the right hand side. The big thing you're checking for here is that it is level from the left to the right. Once you can touch the mug all the way across, you can take off the manual focus gauge, reset the machine to its starting position, and now we can run the job. Because this is a center center engraving job, first I need to set up the center point for where I want the engraving to be. So let's go over to the touchscreen part of the machine and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, over here at the machine, I want to hit the jog button right here. I also want to hit the red dot pointer button right here so the red dot shows up. I want to drag the position, as you can see this X coordinate changing, I want to drag the X position to the center of where I want that engraving to be. Once I have that set where I want it to be, I'm going to push the centering point button, and this point will be the center of where my engraving will land. So over here at the machine, this red dot is going to be the center point of my engraving. I do want to engrave it fairly high on this mug, Next, I'm going to go to the job and just hit the trace button to see where it's going to land. I wanna make sure that everything's going to land within the spray mark that I did before on the mug. Once this is all set up, I'm going to close the lid and run the job. Once the engraving process is complete, it will come off the laser looking like this. Let me show you a good up close. So it's going to be nice and black and there's still the spray all the way around it. So what we need to do now is rinse this off with water. I actually have a spray bottle, so I'm going to spray this down with water and show you how it wipes clean. Here, I'm just going to take this spray bottle of water 
and spray it all the way around, making sure to get all of the spray off. And once it's all cleaned up, it's nice and permanent. Now that it's all cleaned up, here is the final result. So it's got a nice permanent black mark. That is, it is a built up layer on top of the mug. It is not something that's down into the mug. It's not taking away material from the mug. It is building up a layer on top of the mug that is permanent. So again, for this process, I did use the Enduramark black. So this should work on any non-coated metal such as brass or the stainless steel, uh, things of that nature. You may need to clean up the metal just to get any kind of grease or grime off of it. But that is how you engrave a stainless steel mug. So keep in mind that these coatings do cost extra money so when you're doing your pricing and your estimations for an order, keep that in mind because these cans can cost, uh, I forget what this one was, but I know that they can be upwards of $50 or more. Uh, I think they're even more than $50. So just keep that in mind as you're pricing your work that instead of it being an anodized mug, that all you really need is the mug and the cleaner. This one, you're going to need that extra spray and that will affect your cost to some extent, as well as your time investment, because it's going to take just a little bit longer. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you have any questions about the spray or any other laser questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share these things along the way. I want to thank you for following along and I'll see you in the next video.